Hi students, welcome back to computer class. So in our last class we started chapter number 5 programming in Java. Okay, in that class we studied what you mean by programming that is programming it is a five step process. Okay, we studied which which are the five steps which we use for writing a program. Okay, and then we studied what is the need for programming and uh, then we studied the steps of how to write a simple Java program in BlueJay. Okay, and today let us see how we can compile and execute a Java program. What do you mean by the word compiling and executing? See in your lower classes that is in your 6th standard you have studied what do you mean by compiling. And you have studied different types of computer languages that is there are high level languages, low level languages. And we have studied that the only language that is directly understood by the computer is machine language. Okay, and we write programs. For example, we write Java program and Java program it is a high level language. Okay, which is not directly understandable by a computer. Computer understands only machine language. Okay, so we have written a Java program which is a high level language. And if you want to run this high level language inside the computer, this high level languages need to be converted into machine language. Okay, and this process of converting a program which is written in high level language into machine language. This is what you mean by compiling. Okay, so after compiling, now our program is been converted into machine language. Now we can run this particular program in, in our computer. Okay. Once again, that is, see whatever programming languages we write. For example, now we are studying about Java program. Okay. Java, it is a high level languages. And high level languages, they are not understandable by the computer. Computer understands only low level language or machine language okay so we have to convert this java program which is in high level form into machine form okay and the process of converting this program written in high level languages into machine language this process is known as compiling okay after compiling now our program it is in machine form or machine language okay now we can run this particular program in our computer. Okay. So now let us study how to compile and execute a Java program. In BlueJ, for compiling a Java program, there are two ways you can use. Okay. First one is to use the working environment window. Okay. And second way is to use the code window. Okay, once again in BlueJ, there are two options that you can use for compiling a Java program. First way is to use the working environment window and second way is to use the code window. You can use either one of the way in order to compile the Java program. Okay, see in this picture what you see is the code window. Okay, all of you are familiar with this page. Okay, and in this page, see at the top left corner, there is an option given for compile. Okay, there is a button that has been given for compile. You have to click on that compile button. Okay, that is the first method used for compiling a Java program. Okay, and the second method or the alternative method which you can use for compiling is by using the working environment window. See what you see in this picture is the working environment window. Okay, and see over the left pan, or the left side there is an option given for compile you have to click on that compile button okay and again you have to right click on the class icon and click on the compile option from the menu this is how you can uh, compile a program by using the working environment window okay you can use any one of the method for compiling the java program okay so now we have seen how to write a, a simple java program and also how to compile and execute that particular java program okay using bluej students always remember that your java program starts with this part 
Okay, in every Java program, the first part will be this things. It is common in every Java program. First thing is public class, class 1. Okay, your Java program starts with a class. You have studied how to create the class in Java program in our last section. How did you create a class? That is, first thing was you have to open the BlueJ desktop. Okay, and the BlueJ working environment will appear and insert that there is an option given for new project. You have to click on that new project option. Uh, then a dialog box will appear. You will be asked to enter the name of the project. Okay, then you will be clicking on OK button. Then a new window will appear and over that new window, there is a button given for creating class. Okay, as class name. By clicking on the button class name, a dialog box will appear and over the dialog box, you have to enter the name of your class. And whatever name you enter over there will appear over here. Okay. This is how you created class in Java program. Okay. And your Java program first starts with class. Class, class name. Then opening braces will appear this is what you mean by opening braces okay after writing class you have to uh, over the next line you have to enter opening braces and after opening braces another statement appears that is public static void main string argument appears okay after opening braces this statement appears this is common in all java program and after this statement we will be again opening another braces Okay, this is common in all Java programs. This is the first thing that you will be seeing in a Java program. Okay, and this is common in all Java program. And after this thing, after this opening braces, uh, according to the program, different programs, uh, things may change. Okay, and after this opening braces, they may contain different components of java program okay and now we are going to study about different components of java program okay so once again in every java program this much things is common this is the starting of a java program first thing is class and i have taught you how to create a class okay first thing is public class class name then we'll be uh, next over next line we'll be writing an opening braces then after that we'll be writing public static void main string argument of us again we'll be writing an opening braces okay and after that we according to each java program for example if you are uh, adding two numbers then accordingly uh, the statements will change okay we'll be writing the commands for adding two numbers or if you want to multiply two numbers uh, here you will be writing commands for multiplying two numbers okay According to the program, the commands can change over this part. But this much part is common in all Java program. Okay. And now we are going to study about different components of Java program. Okay. By using different components of Java program, we will be writing the commands. Okay. Now let us study about different components of Java program. And I have told you that by using this components of Java program, we will be writing commands for different types of programs. Okay. And the first type of component that we are going to study is about literals. Okay. That is if you want to enter a number, text or any information to a Java program. Okay. For that, you cannot simply enter a number to a Java program. You cannot simply enter a text to your Java program. There is a format in which you have to enter number, text or any information to a Java program. Okay. For example, if you are writing a program for Java program for adding two numbers. So you have to enter two numbers to that program. You cannot simply enter the number 10 or you cannot simply enter the number 20. There is a format in which the number 10 should be entered to a Java program. Okay. And for that we use literals. Literals they provide us the format in which the numbers, text or any information is to be entered to a Java program. Okay. Once again. 
if you want to enter a number text or information or any information to a java program you cannot simply enter these things to a java program there is a format that you have to follow and literals is the one who provide us the format of how to enter the numbers text or any information to a java program okay and literals they are of three types first one is integer literals second one is real literals and third one is string literals okay literals they are of three types integer real and string first let us study about integer literals okay integer literals from the name itself we can understand that they are used for representing numbers okay that is if you want to enter a number to a java program we can use this integer literals this integer literals they give us the format of how to enter the number to a java program okay and integer literals there are three types decimal octal and hexadecimal okay integer literals are of three types decimal octal and hexadecimal okay and whenever you write a integer literal in a program your statement should first start with the keyword int okay whenever you write a integer literal in a java program your statement should first start with the keyword int okay by writing this keyword int it shows that we are writing a integer literal okay after writing the keyword int you have to write the name of that particular integer here i have represented it by using the word decimal you can write any names of your wish okay so first statement that is the first thing that you have to write in the statement is the keyword int by writing the keyword int it shows that you are writing a integer literal after writing the keyword int you have to write the name of that particular integer then you have to write equal to and then you have to write enter the number okay and after writing all these things your statement should end with semicolon okay whichever statement you write in java program it should end with semicolon without entering semicolon at end of the uh, statement a uh, error will appear when you run that particular program okay that is after ending the statement you should end that particular statement with semicolon without entering a semicolon at the end of the statement the statement becomes incomplete while you are running that particular program an error will appear without entering a semicolon at end of the statement okay so once again if you are entering an integer literal to a java program your statement should first start with the keyword int then you have to write the name of that particular integer you can enter any name of your wish so you have to enter the name of that particular integer then you have to write equal to then you have to enter the number okay and at last you have to enter semicolon this is how you enter the numbers that is integer literals in a java program okay and if you are representing an octal number before that particular number we use the prefix zero by entering a prefix zero before a number it represents that it is an octal number okay here for decimal number we have simply entered that particular number but before entering before a particular number if you are entering a prefix zero it represents that it is an octal number and for representing hexadecimal number we enter the prefix zero x before a particular number okay by entering the prefix 0x before a number it represents that it is an hexadecimal number okay once again if you are entering a simply a decimal number you can en simply enter that particular number but if you want to represent an octal number before that particular number you have to enter the prefix 0 and if you are representing a hexadecimal number before that particular number you have to enter the prefix 0x okay 
hope you are clear with what I have said. This is about literal integer literals. Okay, integer literals there are of three types. First one is decimal, second one is octal, and third one is hexadecimal. Okay, and next type of literal is real literals. That is real literals. They are used for representing fractional numbers. For example, nine point nine and zero point nine and or let it be any fractional numbers. We represent them by using real literals. Okay, and last one is string literals. That is, if we want to enter a character or a series of characters or any words to a Java program, we use string literals. Okay. We use string literals in order for entering characters or words or a series of words to a Java program. Okay. For representing string literals, first we write the keyword string. Okay. We first write the keyword string. And always remember that the letter letter S should be capital. Okay. For representing string literals, you use the keyword string. For representing integer literals, we used the keyword int. Similarly, for representing string literals, we use the keyword string. And the letter uh, S should be capital. Okay. String, then you have to enter the name of that particular string. Okay. Here I want to enter a password to the Java program. Okay. So, I used the name as password. Then you have to write equal to, then inside double quotation mark you have to write the particular word okay for entering the character or for entering a series of words into a java program we use string literals first you have to write the word keyword string then you have to write the name of that particular string here i am entering a password so, I am writing the name as password. Okay. Then you have to write equal to. Then inside double quotation mark, you have to enter that particular password. And at last, you have to write semicolon for ending that particular statement. Okay. This is how you represent string literals. Once again, first you have to write the keyword string. Then you have to write the name of that particular keyword, uh, particular string. And you have to write equal to and inside double quotation mark you have to write that particular word. Then at last you have to end the statement using semicolon. Okay, this is how you represent string literals. So this is all about literals. Literals they are used for representing numbers, text or any information in Java program. Okay, and uh, if there are three types of literals, integer literals, real literals and string literals. Integer literals, they are used for representing decimal, octal and hexadecimal numbers. Okay, for writing integer literals, first you have to write the keyword int. Then you have to write the name of that particular integer. Then you have to write equal to and you have to enter the number. And at last, you should end that statement by using semicolon. Okay, and for representing octal numbers, before that particular number, we write the prefix 0. And for representing hexadecimal number, before that particular number, we write the prefix 0x. Okay, this is about integer literals. Real literals, they are used for representing fractional numbers. And string literals, they are used for representing words, series of words, characters, etc. For representing string literals, first we write the keyword string. And the word letter S should be capital always. Okay. Then you have to enter the name of that particular uh, string. Then you have to write equal to. Then inside double quotation marks you should write the particular word. Then you have to enter that particular statement with equal to sign. Okay. This is all about literals.